हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज़ पूजा पाठक एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू द फाइलम एन इन माय इन माय चैनल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द चैप्टर्स और एनी सेक्शन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर एंड आफ्टर दैट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द क्वेश्चन एज रिलेटेड टू द चैप्टर सो दैट इट कैन हेल्प यू ऑल इन एनी टाइप ऑफ कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन इफ यू फॉलो माई चैनल सो इट विल डेफिनेटली हेल्प यू ऑल सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन विल बी फर्स्ट फॉर्म सीलो सीजो सिलोमेट्स आर सो यू ऑल नो सीजो सिलोमेट्स एनिमल्स these are the true silomate why because true silomates they have the property that uh, the silom should be there formed by mesoderm and that silom is lined by the mesoderm layer also okay so here because they are cesio silomate yes they are true silomates but splitting of mesoderm layer occurs okay and that splitting just because splitting of mesoderm layer occurs they are known as cesio silomate unlike pseudo silomates pseudo silomates they don't have mesoderm layer lining okay now coming to the next question so the answer here will be annelids annelids are the cesio silomates and yes they are the first true silomate animal i am again 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 repeating because it is very important to understand for any type of examinations second question in annelids new segments are produced from new segments will always be produced from the pre annel segments okay the be just before the annel segment the segments they will only give rise to the uh, new segments okay now the respiratory pigment present in the blood of annelids are see unlike us like we have the respiratory pigment hemoglobin present in the rbc that will transport the carbon dioxide and oxygen but here in the uh, uh, in the annelids what will happen hemoglobin and chlorocrinin will be present but where it will be present in the dissolved form in the plasma of the blood not in rbc this is very important point to understand okay and you have to learn it also that hemoglobin and chlorocrinin is present in dissolved state very important point now coming to the next question vascularized parapodia which act as a gill like structures are present in just because the annelids they have three classes and uh, polychaeta oligochaeta and hirudinia in polychaeta they have so many parapodia with so many setae so the name already suggested polychaeta so in polychaeta they have parapodia and setae that parapodia is helpful in for them in what in the uh, like a gill like structure what the gill do and does actually it does the respiratory function okay so here also in polychaeta they are vascularized with the blood vessels and that will help them for the respiration the characteristic larva of annelid is so the characteristic larva is trochophore larva and here the diagram is also given okay now coming to the next question identify the annelids without larva in their development see what are the annelids they does not have larva actually larvals are present only in the aquatic form so which one is the aquatic form polychaeta just now we studied so the answer will be polychaeta okay now the next question aphrodite is commonly known as the aphrodite is commonly known as sea mouse you can see the diagram once you see the name aphrodite and just see the diagram this just just because you are viewing this diagram you will definitely uh, definitely uh, you will remember it you will not never forget uh, it's very easy to understand zoology or any subject or any botany any subject with the help of diagrams so don't forget to uh, to see the diagrams related to that particular topic few uh, first formed eucilomates are now we are reading next question uh, first formed eucilomates are i already told you eucilomates are true silomates so first true silomate is cesio silomate animal so who is the cesio silomate animal that is the annelids okay distinct civilization first appears in so distinct civilization is first appears in means civilization means i already told civilization means cephalic word cephalic word means head so distinct head part is first seen in annelids okay now coming to the next question locomotory structures of annelids are now locomotory structures are we have already seated they have yes they have parapodia yes they have suckers suckers are present in the hirudinians okay because they are ectoparasitic forms maybe they are parasitic forms so just because they are parasitic in nature they have suckers also so all of them are correct all of them are correct coming to the next question locomotor structures of polychaetae now polychaetae now you can see the diagram also polychaetae they have parapodia 
and they have setae okay this is parapodia you can see this is the nares from here it is being enlarged you can see this is the parapodia with setae and parapodia not only function as the respiratory organ it will also help in locomotion also help in feeding for them because they are in aquatic forms so definitely it will help them now coming to the next question the annelids without clitellum you can see first of all this is the clitellum okay this prominent part you can see here now we, in which form clitellum is absent completely absent throughout the life cycle actually uh, because just because the uh, polychaetes they are aquatic forms they actually do, they don't need this clitellum but in herodinia and oligochaeta first form they have the clitellum clitellum this oligochaeta they includes the earthworms okay herodinia they includes the leeches okay so oligochaete in earthworm you must uh, you must have seen this part uh, they have throughout their life but this herodinia actually during the breeding season only it appears okay now identify a set of bisexual uh, annelids from the following bisexual animals means here you can see the means here the single body that uh, that is able to produce even the sperms and the ova also the bisexual meaning so they uh, that is man also uh, woman also means the ferratima herodinia they are actually hermaphroditic okay they are hermaphroditic means that her, they will have both the sexes in their body so we can't say that the date is male or female so ferratima and herodinia they are hermaphrodite and they are bisexual annelids coming to the inter internal segmentation is almost absent in these annelids which annelids they have internal segmentation absent that is herodinia or we can say the leeches okay in leeches outside there that segmentation is there that is uh, the outer segmentation is because of annuli which is known as annulation also because outer segmentation is there but internally they are not segmented throughout okay and in earthworm you all know they have segmentation outside also inside also clitellum is formed during the breeding season only very easy question just now i told you all leeches okay leeches they have the clitellum only during the breeding season now coming to the next question the function of botryoidal tissue botryoidal tissue see they have the excretory function in the herodinia this is the characteristic of herodinians actually in annelids the parenchyma tissue and the uh, connective tissues they invade out of the coelom and that only forms this grape like structure that is known as the botryoidal tissue which will help in the excretion for them okay now coming to the next question the common freshwater leech is that is herodinia okay that is herodinaria sorry that belongs to which class herodinia okay now coming to the next question the marine leech is marine leech is pontobdella here you can see this is also resembling the herodinaria that is pontobdella just see the diagram clearly now coming to the next question the clitellum of ferratima is thick girdle that is where it is present in which segment see this uh, clitellum is present in the segment from 14 to 16 okay you can see here from 14 to 16 and these are actually glandular in nature so the answer will be here the clitellum of ferratima ferratima means here that earthworm so earthworm they have glandular uh, this uh, clitellum which is present in around 14 to 16 segment now coming to the next question identify a set of unisexual annelids from the following which one are the unisexual annelids unisexual uh, uni actually in annelids they have only one class which has unisexual organisms means male and female body are different okay they are dioecious two different body so dioecious or unisexual that words uh, may be confusing but you have to understand it and it is uh, very important aphrodite and nereus aphrodite you must have seen here previously aphrodite sea mouse that have so many setae and nereus also it has so many setae so these two belongs to polychaetae so they have unisexual they are actually unisexual annelids now coming to the next question the earthworm has no skeleton definitely but during burrowing okay the anterior end becomes turgid and acts as a hydrostatic skeleton it is due to what it is due to silomic fluid okay i have told in my uh, previous session when we were reading uh, that annelida phylum see this is the hydrostatic skeleton see what happens actually the earthworm they have circular muscles and longitudinal muscles okay these circular muscles and longitudinal muscles 
they are present in their body but the psyllium which is present inside their body that provides a stiffness to their body okay just because they are stiff and they have circular and longitudinal muscles they re relax and contract relax and contract and just because of this relaxation and contraction they are able to move from one place to another and even for the burrowing also and most of the functions so what will be the answer the psyllomic fluid so the answer here is psyllomic fluid and what uh, see, hydrostatic skeleton is very important function of this animals okay so this is uh, all for now students thank you thank you so